I am so thrilled to introduce you to Theodora Scarato. By training, Theodora is a clinical psychotherapist for children and adolescents, so she cares. She cares deeply about what is happening to our children. She is also the executive director of Environmental Health Trust, which is has been mentioned many times today. It's a scientific think tank that publishes research and educates policymakers on environmental issues. She has co-authored several articles on electromagnetic field policy and through EHT, she maintains the most comprehensive database on EMF international actions. And Theodora also spearheaded the efforts that led the state of Maryland to become the first state here in the US to recommend reducing wireless radiation in schools. She's also working really hard on the historic lawsuit that she and the Environmental Health Trust and Dr. Deborah Davis and the Children's Health Defense have filed against the US Federal Communications Commission for ignoring the EMF science. So Theodora, welcome. Thank you so much, Cece, and I'm just honored to be here today to speak with everyone about this issue. Let me get my slides up. Okay, great. So um, I need to figure out how to just move them to that. There we go. Okay, great. So our website is ehtrust.org. Please go to our website. We have a lot of resources. I wanted to share some of what we do, some international policy efforts around the world, and also recommend that in the first conference in Brazil of electromagnetic radiation, Dr. Deborah Davis, our president, uh, gave a talk, and that's available all online. And it is a great uh, uh, circle around uh, the science on wireless and 5G radiation. We also have resources online. Our scientists publish research. We also educate policymakers and track the policy, um, as Cece stated. And you can go to our website to get compendiums of the research. Now, there are many governments that recommend we reduce cell phone and wireless radiation, especially to children. So I have some of these on the screen here. However, for in some of these countries, people aren't even aware that their health ministry has this information or that the recommendations have been made. In other countries, there is more transparency in public education campaigns. And I want to briefly talk about that. In France, where they have several laws starting in 2010 related to cell phones. Uh, they measure and publish the radiation from cell towers. And more recently, the French ministers passed an order in 2019 with the following statements related to labeling on cell phones when you buy them. Keep radio equipment away from the belly of pregnant women. Keep radio equipment away from the lower abdomen of adolescents. And yet in the United States and many countries, of course, this is an image actually from a Baltimore public school where kids are holding wireless devices on their laps in schools for hours a day. In Belgium, cell phones designed for young children are banned from sale. Uh, and as well, France and French Polynesia have similar laws. There's also an advertising on cell phones. Uh, so you can't advertise on the television uh, to this age group as well. And those are, those are images of the phones, which they have a list of the different phones which you're not allowed to sell. This is a bus in Cyprus, part of a large scale children's health campaign to reduce exposure to children. This is the translation on one side, don't irradiate me, learn how to protect me. And you can see it on the bus here uh, in Greek. In Cyprus, the Archbishop Makarios Hospital uh, has removed wireless from the pediatric and neonatal units. And you can learn more at the Children's Environmental and Protection uh, Committee of Cyprus. In French Polynesia, I look like I'm missing one of these images, but there's a public health campaign to, to educate the uh, people on how to reduce exposure both to wireless radiation as well as magnetic field, electromagnetic fields. Oh, this is, um, also another image they have. Because, because it's invisible and we can't see it, uh, we often don't know that it exists and they're making the, visi the invisible visible. 
Environmental Health Trust, uh, we've been working on this issue for over a decade. I got involved about um, a decade ago, but Environmental Health Trust has been tracking not only the science and publishing science, but also raising awareness of the policy. So we have a section on our website about 5G. What are different countries doing around the world? And we were honored to present it to the Italian marathon on 5G. There are over 600 Italian cities where their mayors and elected officials have passed resolutions to halt 5G. In France too, there's dozens of uh, elected officials who signed on to appeals and around the world, uh, many in many different countries, there are different actions this is a handout that we have available online that we're always updating related to policy on 5G and cell towers. This is one of many handouts we have on how to reduce wireless from cell phones or in your home. We would love to have translations to all of these. So um, anything that we have online, uh, please let us know if you have it translated, we will make it available also. We have a page with Spanish translations, Italian, and French. As Cece mentioned, the Maryland State Children's Environmental Health and Protection Advisory Council was the first body of the state, of a US state, to make recommendations recommending limiting wireless exposures in schools. Because in the United States, we have wireless radiation as a ever increasing environmental exposure in the classroom to our youngest and most vulnerable children. I worked for many years directing an intensive therapy program in schools. And um, when I learned about the impact to the brain and the brain damage that had been found in research studies, that is what got me motivated to work on this issue. They also have a recommendation to, when you build new, new buildings, new school buildings, put in those network cables so that you can ethernet connect and it do, you don't have to go back and, and you open the walls and, and put in those cables. We have, this is part of a handout we have that has the actions by teacher and education organizations in North America. The New Jersey Education Association has recommendations on schools on how to hardwire how to put devices in airplane mode. The United Educators of San Francisco passed a resolution on safer technology, asking that the California cell phone advisory that uh, CC mentioned, that it should be disseminated to students and staff. And you can download these resources and print them out. Now, despite all that, we still have these outdated FCC limits with uh, exposure limits for, for humans for wireless cell phones and cell towers, which have been unchanged since 1996. Our United States uh, Environmental Protection Agency was defunded fully in 1996 from developing proper uh, safety limits to set what level is safe. And instead the United States adopted industry uh, limits that industry field groups had created. As is discussed uh, in this wonderful conference for the last few days, the uh, limits are based on heating, not biological effects. They're not based on research on children's unique vulnerability. They don't consider impacts during pregnancy or the use of multiple devices at one time right next to our body. And they're not for uh, trees, bees, birds, or wildlife. So in, 19, um, in 2019, the FCC made a decision to keep their 1996 limits. They stated that the limits didn't need to be changed, even though on the record were numerous uh, thousands of pages of scientific studies and statements and testimonies uh, recommending a change so that they were biologically based. So at that time, we filed, there are 14 petitioners in our case, the historic lawsuit, Environmental Health Trust uh, at Al versus the FCC, along with Consumers for Safe Cell Phones, Children's Health Defense, and numerous other petitioners, uh, that the FCC violated several United States laws. 
the Administrative Procedures Act, the National Environmental Policy Act, the 1996 Telecommunications Act. Our case also is focused on the need for children to have protections and that people with electromagnetic illness are not being accommodated and are continuing to be harmed, as is the population. And one of the things that we point out, which I know has been uh, covered um, by, um, by Kent earlier, is that we don't have safety limits and have never had a systematic review of the harm by any US agency for birds, bees, or trees. So we're rolling out all of this new technology. With 5G comes these uh, millions of new wireless antennas in our neighborhoods close to where we live, work, and play. And yet, in addition to people who are gonna have these antennas outside bedroom windows, the birds and the pollinators are going to be closer than, than humans are, and yet our limits were not set to protect them. So I wanted to point out this really important paper, which was just published in the Reviews on Environmental Health. It's called The Effects of Non-Ionizing Electromagnetic Fields on Flora and Fauna, Part 1, Rising Ambient Electromagnetic Levels in the Environment. And it's by top experts in this field in the United States, Blake Levitt, uh, Dr. Henry Lai, and Albert Manville who is a retired biologist of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, and they document the exponential increases in electromagnetic fields in nearly all environments and uh, present, and this is the first of a three-part series, the research showing broad wildlife effects uh, on orientation, migration, food finding, reproduction, mating, nest and den building, and survivorship, genotoxic effects, and the importance of recognizing ambient electromagnetic fields, those environmental levels that surround us from all of the wireless networks and cell tower systems in place, and to recognize them as a novel form of pollution and to develop rules at regulatory agencies so that they can be regulated like other pollutions. And here I have this image, uh, you know, birds and uh, they, they perch on antennas and they are unprotected. In addition, um, our, our lawsuit focuses on the impacts to a child's developing brain. This is research uh, by uh, Brazilian experts who presented at your conference, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Alvaro uh, and Augusto de Salas uh, and other uh, engineers in Brazil that looked at the increased exposure to children. Uh, and we also put on the FCC record research on the, the neurological impacts, the impacts to the brain that have been found both in uh, animal experimental studies, as well as studies that looked at impacts to behavior with prenatal exposure to, to women who are pregnant. Now in the United States, uh, there are several U.S. expert scientists uh, in very prominent positions, now retired, who are speaking out on this issue and uh, speaking to the public. So Dr. Linda Birnbaum, who's recently retired as the director of the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences at NIH and uh, former director of the National Toxicology Program, has a statement which was in an amicus brief for our case. There are several amicus briefs. Please go online to ehtrust.org to, to read all of them. They are each critically important and lend important information to our case. What Dr. Birnbaum talked about was the National Toxicology Program findings, those findings of clear evidence of cancer in a $30 million study. And she states that they demonstrate the potential for radiofrequency radiation to cause cancer in humans and explains that the criticisms levied against them um, are not backed by the data. And she points to Dr. Ronald Melnick's uh, published paper uh, responding to the criticisms by Igner. Dr. Chris Portier, who's now retired director of the United States National Center for Environmental Health at the CDC, and the uh, former director of the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, also has been 
uh, putting forward reports and letters on this issue. There is a case moving forward in the United States where over a dozen people are alleging that their cell, that their uh, brain tumors were caused by their heavy cell phone use. It's been winding through the case for years. And uh, in that case, uh, Dr. Portier put forward a report reviewing the research on radio frequency radiation. And a quote from the report which states, given human, animal, and experimental evidence, I assert that to a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, the probability that radio frequency radiation exposure causes gliomas and aromas is high. He and Dr. Birnbaum, uh, both of them actually also signed on to a letter by several experts internationally calling on the Italian government not to loosen their more strict radiation limits. Now, uh, we have uh, environmental health trust scientists as well as scientists from around the world have written a letter to President Biden on 5G with recommendations for a sustainable wired, not wireless infrastructure to be uh, prioritized, a halt to 5G and 4G densification, an assessment of the energy consumption and climate impact of, of 5G and the, and the associated densification of the infrastructure, an assessment of the environmental impact of the 5G network in the United States and a genuine review of the research to develop science-based safety limits for human and wildlife uh, electromagnetic field exposures and the appointment of FCC commissioners who are absent of ties to the wireless industry, a multimedia national public awareness education campaign and a policy to reduce wireless exposures to our workers uh, in retail, in the electrical, our, our occupational health agency needs to address this issue, and as well in schools. Previously, there was a letter to President Trump that was signed by um, hundreds of medical professionals, and you can find that online. It details the science and a roadmap, we believe, for our country and for many countries when it comes to addressing this issue. Please go to Environmental Health Trust, where we have lists of science on uh, 5G, small cells. Uh, we have pages on cell tower radiation and we have uh, printable cards and colorful resources you can share with your friends and neighbors. You can contact us for a presentation. Please be sure to sign up for our newsletter at ehtrust.org. And uh, I'm glad to answer any questions after this, this excellent panel about the work that we're doing. Thank you so 